One of the most common uses for Linux-based servers is to function as a web server. And we do this because we have much better options for licensing or not licensing than we do with using Windows and trying to set up licensing on a Windows web server. So let's talk about how we would do that. Um, there are a couple of web servers we can use, Apache and Nginx and probably more, but those are the big ones. So we're going to start with... Uh, installing Apache. So I'm going to do, let me make sure I'm in the right screen here, I'm going to do sudo, see if I can spell correctly, sudo apt update to make sure I've got the latest version in my apt cache. And this will check everything for me. Read my package list. I have seven packages of cleanup can be upgraded. I'm going to worry about that a little bit later. So I'm going to do a sudo apt install Apache 2. And this is going to do our configuration for us, or our installation for us. We'll worry about configuration in a minute. Now, this does our full install. Be aware that Apache has a ton of modules that can be added to this. So at this point, I have Apache installed and up and running, but I have a whole bunch of other modules that can be added as well to give Apache more functionality. We'll talk about some of those a little bit later. So I can verify this works. And by the way, this comes up and installs and everything is working immediately. But I can kind of verify it works and we're going to do the fun way to verify it. So here I'm going to issue my command IPA and that's going to give me my IP address right here. 134 and I'm going to write this down because I'm going to need it in a second. 134.39.161.84. So I'm going to bring my web browser over here and I'm going to put in that address 134.39.161.84. And that's going to go out and look up that website. And here is my Apache 2 default page. So, and great big thing. Hey, it works. Cool. We have a fully functioning web server. Now it's just serving the Apache 2 default page, but what the heck, you know, we've proven that it actually works. All right. So that was cool. Now let's take a look at some of our configuration options here with it. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to change directory to etc Apache 2 and we're going to do an ls-l. Now here is our main configuration file, apache2.conf. And then we have some uh, folders here, configuration available, configuration uh, enabled, mods available, mods enabled, sites available, sites enabled. So let's start with our basic configuration file. So I'm going to nano, and I'm not going to sudo this because I'm not going to change anything. I just want to take a look at it, apache2.conf. And here is our basic Apache configuration. And I didn't sudo it, so I get this little warning down here saying Apache2.conf is unwritable. That's fine. So as I page down through this, I'm going to see, like normal, in some of these configuration files, not all of them, but a bunch of them have some documentation. And this one gives us a bunch of documentation. Anything that has the cyan color and this hash in front of it, that's a documentation comment. Anything that's just straight white or light gray, as the case may be, uh, that's one of our actual configurations. So as we scroll down, we'll see all of these different configuration options. And as we go through, there's a couple of things down here at the bottom that I want you to see. Included optional, conf-enabled, forward slash asterisk.conf. Basically, it means if we've got any config files there, in that conf enabled, it will go ahead and use those config files. Same thing here with sites of it enabled. This is going to be our config files, which give information about all the sites that are currently enabled and running. So I can go into this sites enabled and I can look at my config files and see what sites are actually being served by my Apache server. So I want to exit out of here. And let's do this ls-l thing again. And you're going to see we have sites enabled, which is what it was just talking about. 
and sites available. So let's take a look at the sites enabled. And I'm going to do an ls-l for sites-enabled. And that's going to give me this file here, which is basically going to be a link to another file. Well, that other file is going to be in sites available. So this is how we're going to do it. If we if we're just doing one web server uh, or one website, there we go. If we're just doing one website, this is really easy. I can take advantage of my default configuration and just use it. If I'm going to have more then what will happen serving multiple websites, then what I'll do is in sites-available, I'll create a config file for every single one of those. And then I will enable them. And when I enable them in uh, Ubuntu, there is a little command that will allow me to enable a site. And it's super easy and actually makes life a little bit easier. Um, Doing that, enabling uh, the site that way, it's A2, so Apache 2, E in site, and then you'd give it the name of the config file, and that will enable that site. So you don't have to worry about it. You put it in the sites available, and then it's just A2, E in site, and then site stash available forward slash, and then whatever the name of your config file is, mysite.conf. And that will enable that particular site. So with that in mind, let's look at sites-available. So ls-l sites-available. And you'll see we have a default SSL site and a default uh, triple zero dash default. Okay, this is my config file. So this one I want to nano as well. So nano sites dash available. And remember sites enabled just creates a link to this file forward slash zero zero zero. And then I'm just going to tab to finish that off. Okay, first thing we want to see right here. So everything is going to be inside this virtual host file. So virtual host 80. Here's my server admin. Here's my document root. We're going to take a look at that in a minute. Uh, var www.html. We have an error log. We have a custom log. And that ends our virtual host definition. OK, a couple of things I want you to see here. Virtual host asterisk colon 80. That means we're going to listen on any IP address on port 80. And that's going to identify this virtual host file. So, or this virtual host that we're uh, hosting. So it listens on every address on port 80. So if we want to create another one, we could do it with a different address. Or we could do it with a different name rather than address. If we only had one, we could do it with a different port number if we wanted it to be hidden, whatever. Now we do need to change down here the document root. So that document root is where our website is going to be hosted, where our files are going to be. And those are the files that we're going to serve to anything that matches this IP address and port number. So if I was to do this, if I was to make another virtual host, I could just copy this file and then I could make the changes that I want and set the IP address and or port number that I wanted to listen to. I could set who my server admin is. I could set a new site for document root. That's going to be key. I need it needs to be in var www, but I can choose, you know, my site as a directory name and put everything in there. And then I can create separate logs if I want to. And the advantage of doing those separate logs is then I can view logs based on that particular site. OK, so let's take a look at one more thing. We're going to whoops, clear the screen first. ls-l for slash var www. Let's start with there. And here's where we see our HTML file. Now, this is where we're going to want to put folders. If we're doing multiple sites, this is where we're going to want to put our other site folders. If we're only doing one site, then we can just put everything into HTML and be just fine. So if we look at HTML, this is going to be right here. We're going to see index.html. And that's the page that got brought up 
when we loaded or when we browsed to this using our web browser a couple of minutes ago. So I want to, let's do forward slash index.html, but I'm going to go ahead and nano this rather than just list it. And here we can see our HTML document that got served and then displayed as that uh, web page when we pulled it up. Okay, there we go. So here's what you would do. Let's say you are doing a single server or a single website on your server. You can use the default website or the default configuration and you're pretty much done. All you have to do is copy over your website files into, let me go ahead and clear my screen here, forward slash var, forward slash www, forward slash HTML. And as long as you're doing a basic website for one uh, site or hosting just one site, just copy your files into this folder and your website is up and running. Now, if you are wanting to do more than one website, then you'd create separate folders to keep your files separate. So you might do var www.mysite1, var www.mysite2, whatever. And then you would create another config file, which would go in your sites available. So let's take a look at sites-available. You could copy the default file and change it to mysite1.conf and do your configuration in there. Set the IP address, the port number you want to listen to, set the name if you're doing it by name rather than by IP address. Um, set the uh, home directory and then enable the site. Use the command a2 en site and then the path to see if I can spell my site.conf or whatever you name the file. And that would enable the site and it would be up and running. Now, one other thing, when you enable that site, um, when you enable that site, Apache doesn't start serving it right away. And the reason is Apache is serving what it knows about. So when you do that, um, when it first loads, it loads its configuration files, and that's what it starts serving. Now, if you don't, um, or if you make a change, you need to reload those configuration files. So it's sudo systemctl, and then what we want is reload Apache 2. Now we can restart Apache 2 as well. If you restart, it shuts down the web server and then it brings it back up. And it's fairly quick, but anybody who's currently browsing their session gets dropped. If you do a reload, what it does is it reloads the configuration files. So Apache just rereads those configuration files, applies them, and if you just added another site or made another change to the configuration, then that's going to take effect as soon as we do that reload. Okay, there we go. That is a real quick introduction to installing and using Apache 2 to host a website on Ubuntu Server.